Angos Analytics Software Suite, a comprehensive overview of decision trees and strategy trees. This 40-minute feature-rich demonstration of our product is designed to provide end users with a more comprehensive overview of the ease of use and the powerful capabilities of our decision trees and strategy trees, which are foundational components of our Knowledge Studio software. This is not a full demonstration of all of our capabilities within Knowledge Studio, and if you wish to learn more about market basket analysis, scorecards, and more of the advanced features of our software, we would be more than happy to take you through it. Angos Advantage. The demonstration will showcase the Angos decision tree and strategy tree advantages. You will observe the flexibility to grow decision trees by finding splits, forcing splits, editing bins and ranges, copying and pasting subtrees, and merging nodes. We will demonstrate how you can validate and monitor your models, as well as optimize and deploy them. Throughout this demonstration, the exceptional ease of use of Angos software will be conveyed and you will understand how Angos has some of the best integration capabilities with other models in the business. Our demonstration today is performed by Dr. Mamdou Rafat, Managing Director of our EMEA operations and a published expert in the field of predictive analytics and data mining. Okay, starting now our new project. And the first thing we do is that we import the data from some sources, could be from Excel worksheets, ODBC connections to access databases like Oracle and SQL Server, SAS datasets in their native formats, or uh, simple text files. In this exercise, I'm using a dataset stored in Excel. And this dataset contains 16,000 variables, uh, 16,000 records, 14 variables, representing some marketing campaign where I have some demographics and uh, we recorded the uh, outcome of the marketing effort, either yes or no. So this is a response variable and we have some demographics on these 16,000 customers in the form of age or class, number of years of education, relationship, gender, and capital gain and capital loss. So the software functions can be divided into three sets of functions. The first one is uh, revolve around the data profiling and understanding, and then all the modeling functions like building linear logistic regression models, uh, cluster analysis, and uh, scorecards. And then we deploy these models. So data profiling, modeling, and then scoring. So when it comes to data profiling, first we look at the univariate statistics of each variable, like minimum, maximum, standard deviation. I can calculate that by pressing on the uh, uh, calculate all button. So and in addition to that, we can also access additional uh, statistics like the mode, the upper quartile, lower quartile. And when I highlight them here, they appear here on the right-hand side. And everything we see in the software can be simply copied and pasted to all Microsoft Office tools, uh, such as Excel, PowerPoint, and Word. In addition to just looking at simple statistics, we also calculate all uh, the charts, plot all the charts of all the variables, representing distribution of each variable by default. Continuous variables are plotted as histograms and categorical variables as pie charts, but these can be changed here from the gallery as you have seen here, as you see here in this charts. And we also have advanced options like making the, star, the charts 3D and coloring them and rotating them, copying and pasting them. So for example here, the histogram of the age is uh, let's say between 17 and 24, this is the frequency, 24 to 31, uh, this is the frequencies, and these ranges can be edited and grouped and uh, calculated automatically with different options. Uh, the variables can be accessed either by a drop list like here, like accessing the variables, or a CD style button uh, where we flip to the next variable, next variable, just like we access songs on a DVD player. Uh, if we look now at uh, the response variable, I have the responders. This respo uh, represents the response of the marketing campaign. I have the responders are about 23%, and the non-responders are the rest. And usually the first question we ask ourselves, what is the difference between responders and non-responders? Uh, so the difference can be seen here by using what we call the segment viewer, where we take the response variable with the two categories, yes and no, and profile it against all the other variables. In this case, it's going to give me 39 charts. These charts will be 
uh, distributed here in three columns. Uh, the first column represents the distribution of each variable in the whole data set, and then the distribution of each variable in the no group and the years group. So when I fit that into the width of the screen, for example, here I have the, vari I have the distribution of the age in the responders group. Uh, I find the high frequencies are between 41 and 46. On the other hand, for the non-responding group, it looks like almost like a uniform distribution or even higher distribution, higher frequencies in the younger age, 22 to 26. So in general, the responders are a bit older. If I scroll down to the next variable, I find another variable representing the marital status where most of the responders are concentrated in the married category, the blue category here, the married ones. If I scroll to other variables, for example, uh, relationship, uh, I find that most of the responders are from the category husband. So they are husband, older, married, so they are also males as represented here with the uh, sex variable. Now, if sometimes we don't really see a clear distinction between the distribution of a variable in the responders and non-responders group, such as this variable capital gain here. So I, can, I don't really see a clear distinction between the two charts. So in this case, cross tabulations might help. And cross tabulation wizard is very similar to the pivot tables wizard in Excel. So I am profiling here the sex variables versus the response. So it's giving me a three-dimensional histogram. On one dimension, I have uh, the male-female. On the other hand, I have the responders, non-responders. And on the vertical axis, we have the frequency or the count of these records. If I take the variable capital gain and drop it in the middle, by default, this will calculate the average value of that variable. Uh, we can calculate many other measures, or we can even design our own uh, function if we wanted to. And that will give me that the vertical axis now changed from being just the frequency to the average capital gain of these four groups. So I have now male, female, responder, non-responder, and then the vertical axis or the height of the bar represents the average capital gain of these four groups. And that ch chart here shows me something I did not see before in the data set, and that is the average capital gain of responders, be that male or female, is much higher than the average capital gain of non-responders. This was not visible here in the capital gain distribution in these two charts. So sometimes cross tabulations could reveal something that is hidden in the data that I didn't see before. Finally, we have uh, the cross tabulate the, the correlation coefficients. We can calculate the correlation coefficients. In the software, we support two common uh, correlation coefficients, the Pearson and the Spearman, uh, Spearman row. And they are well defined for the continuous variables, where we have here a button that facilitates the selection of these continuous variables. And it gives me uh, the values of the correlation coefficients. For example, between the aging capital gain is 0 0.07, the aging capital loss is 0.05, and so on. We can also navigate these values by selecting one variable of interest. For example, let's say capital gain. So the first column will always be capital gain versus all the other variables, and then the correlation coefficients and their absolute values. And if we click on the header of any table in the software uh, of, for example, the absolute value, it sorts in ascending order, another click in descending order. So what is the most correlated variable to capital gain? In this case, it is the hours per week. So we have done some profiling. We looked at the statistics of each variable. We looked at the charts and their dist distributions of the different variables, looking for uh, interesting features like the number of categories, uh, outliers, variables, uh, values with small or high frequencies. And then we looked at the segment viewer and the cross tabulations and the correlation coefficients. And then we came up with some hypotheses or some ideas. For example, we can calculate a new ratio, calculate uh, a new variable. Uh, if we look at this variable, for example, representing the relationship, I have too many categories, so maybe I can simplify this variable by grouping the category husband with the category wife, and I call it a new category called merit, and then I group all the other categories and call them other. So we can do that by the dataset editor. We can add and remove and, and delete uh, variables. So I'm going to define here a new variable. I'm going to call it relationship two. And uh, here in this expression editor, we can calculate, we can write any expression in terms of all the variables we have. We have different fu functions here at our disposal. We also have uh, operators. In addition to that, to make it easy for the analyst to write expressions without uh, worrying about the syntax. We also prepared some helpers that write the expression automatically. For example, let me show you here the binning. 
uh, for the variable called relationship. So uh, the editor here helps me select, uh, group the category husband and wife and group them together and call them married. And then take all the other categories and call them other. And that will generate uh, the statement here, the case statement automatically, which will generate this new expression. And when I add that to my data set, at the end here I can see the new variable and if I take that variable look at its distribution I have the married and other and if I look at the segment viewer to see whether this transformation will help me add to my understanding of the response behavior so I added this variable at the bottom and so I can see here that uh, yes it turned out to be a very good transformation uh, so if I group the uh, categories husband and wife in the relationship and created a new variable on that basis it turns out to be a variable that uh, is discriminating between the responders and non-responders. The question is of course how did I find this particular transformation? Why did I specifically pick this variable relationship and this particular grouping of husband and wife and all the other categories in another group? There are a simple answer for that which is the decision tree. The decision tree helped me find this particular variable and this particular uh, transformation. So let's go on to the next feature which is decision tree and before we build any model um, we are going to partition the data or split the data into two or three partitions. The first one is going to be the development sample which is going to be let's say either a percentage or a certain number of records. So in this case I'm taking 10,000 records uh, which is about 60% of the data set um, and then uh, I'm going to take the second partition which is going to be uh, about uh, let's say uh, I'm going to call it the validation partition which is going to be another let's say 6,000 records of the data set. So when I have done that I have two partitions here of the data set one is 10,000 one is 6,000 which I'm going to test the data on. If I look at the development sample in which I'm going to build a decision tree, so I'm going to call it the response tree and the dependent variable in this case is the response variable or the DV and the next step in the wizard which shows me the uh, steps of building a decision tree model, uh, we have four, mo four mo uh, what we call measures of purity of the decision tree. These four measures represent four algorithms of uh, the two families of algorithms of decision tree. Decision trees algorithms belong to two families. One family is called the cart and the other one is called the shade and these four that we have in Knowledge Studio are variants on these famous two uh, uh, families of algorithms. So when I have the root node of the decision tree I will have uh, it's 10,000 records on one side I have the small uh, yellow box here which is representing the yes category which is 23% and uh, or 2300 records and the 76% is represented by the blue or the no category. Of course we can improve on these number uh, colors by taking for example the no category to be uh, a light blue so I can see the numbers behind it and uh, the yes to be light red so I can also see the numbers behind it. So now the yes category is represented by red. These are the hot customers 23% and the uh, no category is uh, the 76% represented by the blue. Uh, in decision trees when I find a split in a decision tree the whole idea of a decision tree works by looking at each variable and trying to segment the data using this variable into different categories, different bins or different segments and trying to separate as much as possible the yes from the no. And it calculates or the algorithm in the background calculates all kinds of statistics and ranks the variables according to their predictive power and this is what we call the rank here. And in this case we find that the top variable is relationship and the best way to segment the data on the variable relationship is to group husband and wife together and in them I find a response rate of 44% instead an average response rate of 23%. This is where I got the idea of grouping uh, the specific variable of relationship and finding uh, the group on husband and wife in one category and all the other categories in another uh, group.
Of course, I can go here and find another split in this group, and in that case, uh, the order of the variables, the predictive variables, are going to be different because we have only a subset of the population, not the whole population. And the best variable in this case is education. So, for example, we have here a group of uh, masters and PhDs. They are only 3% of the population.